Hi, and welcome back. Here at The Cottage, our family of seven has been on a journey towards a more simple and minimal lifestyle for the past five or six years. Maybe you are someone who is new to the idea of minimalism, just learning about it, and have stumbled upon this channel to learn more and to ultimately decide if it's something that you want to try for yourself. So today I'm going to be giving you seven different ideas of ways that you can test out minimalism without making a major commitment. When we were just starting out the process of simplifying our lives, we felt very overwhelmed with all that there was to accomplish. We were faced with years and years of clutter and had tons of bad habits that had gotten us to that point that needed to be corrected. There was a lot to learn and at times it felt almost insurmountable. And maybe you are feeling in that same position, you know that you need to make a change, you know you want to make a change, but you're not sure if minimalism is the right path for you and something that you really want to commit to. So the seven tests that I'm going to share with you today are a way for you to kind of dip your toe into minimalism without too much of a commitment. The great thing is that you don't need to do each of these tests all at once. In fact, you don't even need to do all of them at all. Just choose one that you think is most appealing, would be most beneficial for your life, and give it a try. And as time goes on, if you want to add a couple more, you can do that as well. It's all about taking that baby first step to bring you towards a path of change. The first test is to box up any maybe or what if, just in case type of items and set them aside. Now, a lot of times people, when they think about minimalism, they automatically go to the idea of having very, very few possessions and that sort of freaks them out. The thought of getting rid of something that might be used later, you might regret getting rid of, can be really kind of a game stopper for that person. And so in this test, what you need to do is give each member of your family a box or two and have them put some items in those boxes that they have not used in a while. They don't consider them to be really go-to items that they use on a regular basis. Put them in the box, then find an area in your home that is set aside yet still very accessible and put those items in that storage space. I suggest that you keep these items boxed up for a minimum of three months and a maximum of 12 months. This is just going to give you a really nice span of time that can help you understand and realize if you really needed anything in those boxes. And the benefit of this test is that you can access the boxes if at any point you find yourself needing something from the contents. Now, at the end of the trial period, you can decide then if you want to donate these items or keep anything from these boxes, but you will probably have come to the realization that if they have sat in that box for that amount of time, likely you didn't need those things after all. Bonus points for this test, if you are able to donate the entire box without looking in it to see what was in there, that is going to be a really good thing if you're able to do that. Test number two is to clear the walls. You can do this in one room or all rooms of your house, but the general idea is to take everything down off the walls just for a season to really enjoy the visual simplicity that it brings and to help you appreciate the space that you have. And I have had some comments on this channel when I talk about decorating, people who say they love minimalism but they feel that a home without art just isn't for them because they really appreciate art and they feel that it just looks too bland and boring. Again, I'm not suggesting that this is a permanent fix for your home. I'm suggesting that you take a moment to appreciate the decluttered, fully simple view of a room or the entire house and then start adding things back in. So what I like to do here at our cottage is I have a couple spots where I like to showcase art pieces and then I treat it almost like a gallery. So I have quite a bit of art that I rotate through seasonally and a few really special pieces that I like to bring out and showcase. Having this gallery space where you can rotate through, I actually feel that it makes me appreciate things a lot more. I can see the colors more vividly. It really draws your eye in when you only have one or two pieces hanging up. So that is test number two, and I'm willing to bet that if you do this exercise, you're going to find yourself appreciating and feeling even more connected to your art than ever before. 
Test number three is to eliminate gifts. And I get a lot of pushback when I talk about this topic in particular, but I feel like it deserves to be on this list because it is very easy to do and it forces intentionality and being intentional is a core concept in minimalism. When people think about minimalism, they're usually imagining people getting rid of things that they already have, but a very core component is not bringing extra things in. It's really about understanding what you're surrounded with. And it wouldn't make sense to declutter our homes and get rid of a bunch of stuff and then bring in two times more because we're not taking care of the other side of the equation. So when it comes to buying things, we can't completely eliminate any purchases. There are things we're going to need to be purchasing at all times, groceries, clothing, all sorts of things that are going to be coming into our lives. But an easy category to cut out is gifts. Instead of giving a physical gift, think about giving the gift of time to the person that you are trying to celebrate. And those moments are very, very special. We like to celebrate an every other year no gift Christmas here at the cottage and I can say that the years we don't give gifts have produced some of the most sweet and special memories that we have as a family because we're fully engaged together and focused on spending time and quality time with one another and there's not that preconception of well, you know, soon we're going to be opening gifts or what am I going to get for gifts? Are they going to like what I got for them for a gift? All those things go by the wayside. We're just really honed in on one another and those memories are so invaluable. So again, this is maybe a controversial one to some people, but it is definitely a test that you can try and I think that you will really enjoy it as well. The fourth way that you can test out minimalism is by streamlining one task. And this is all about efficiency. It's about spending less time doing the things you don't need to do, don't love to do, so that you have more time to do the things that are really important. And I like to use the example of cooking a meal. If you go into your kitchen ready to cook a meal, but you haven't thought of what recipe you want to do, you haven't bought the groceries, you don't have the right tools, it's going to take you a lot longer to cook that meal than if you had everything ready and prepared. So the same goes for really any task in your life. If you don't have a plan in place, it's going to take you a lot more time. So for this test, you're going to want to find a task that seems to be taking up a lot of your time, something you don't really necessarily enjoy doing, and find a way to make it more streamlined and more efficient. It can be anything from cleaning your bathrooms to your morning routine, maybe grocery shopping or doing your laundry. Every little second that you can shave off is going to give more time to enjoy the things that you really want to do. Test number five is to reevaluate your wardrobe. The easiest place to get started with simplifying is definitely in the closet. And even though clothing is a need to buy type of item, we, are we all need clothing, we all need to buy it at some point in time, we have a hard time getting rid of clothing items. And that means that likely your closets are filled with things that don't fit, things you don't like to wear, maybe they're dated, maybe they're ripped or stained. We just tend to hold on to clothing for a really long time. And so in this test, I want you to get rid of everything that isn't your favorite. Things that don't make you feel great, get rid of them. Have only the items in your closet that you love to wear, the things that you reach for all the time and that make you feel great. And I can assure you that getting rid of all of the excess, even though it's going to make your closet seem a lot more empty, you're going to feel like you have a lot more clothing options because everything in that closet then is an option for you to wear. And you can literally go in there and grab a shirt without even seeing it and you're gonna know that it fits and you like to wear it. And so this process, again, is probably the easiest one from this list that you can start with. And if you're looking to do just one thing from this list and want something easy, start with this one. Test number six is to commit to keeping one area clean and organized. And I'm not talking about a room, I'm talking a lot smaller, much more micro level. Think the junk drawer or the dining room table. Commit to keeping these areas very clear, very organized, and really the benefits of this test are twofold. Number one, you're going to prove to yourself that you can keep this area clean and so that's going to give you motivation to maybe start clearing some other areas. 
And the second thing is you're going to really start to understand the emotion and the feeling behind having a more clutter-free existence. And so knowing that your table is clear is going to invite more family meal time together and that is going to be a, ben a benefit that you will get from this as well. Knowing where that charging cord that you're usually looking for that's normally lost in that junk drawer but now that it's organized you can find it easily. Those emotions and feelings of success are going to fuel you into being able to take on a bigger challenge. Maybe then instead of just having the dining room table clear, you're working on getting the entire room cleared, for example. So this is an easy task. It's a simple one, but commit to keeping that area clean and organized for a good period of time, maybe up to a month, and then you have proven to yourself that you can do it and you can expand it even further. And I'm going to end this list with test number seven and probably the most difficult of all, and that is to practice saying no. It's amazing how simple and yet difficult this can be. Those two little letters make such a big impact. And it's saying no to the extra commitments that you don't need to be taking on, saying no to hand-me-down items that you don't need, saying no to impulse buys. I want you to remember that saying no is actually also saying yes on the other side of the coin. Giving a no response to serving on a committee or board might mean that you say yes to being able to read your kids' bedtime stories, or saying no to those impulse buys, those little nickel and dime purchases, might mean that you can say yes to a larger purchase, a more quality investment. And so just keep this in mind when you're practicing saying no. Again, this is very difficult for a lot of people. This is very important and a good test to try out if you want to see if minimalism will work for your life. Again, my family has been practicing minimalism for five to six years now, and we have seen tremendous benefits from living this more minimalistic lifestyle. But this is something that you need to discover for yourself and have your own journey on. And so I hope that these seven simple tests can help you dip your toe in the water without making too huge of a commitment. If there was one of these steps that really inspired you and you want to give a try, I would love it if you would comment down below so I can give you some extra encouragement and motivation. Thank you so much for watching my video today, and I hope that you'll stop by the cottage again really soon.